Hello everyone, Alan 11 here, back with another video today. If you like what you see, make sure to leave a like and let me know what you thought about the video down below. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to stay up to date with all the videos. Mahalo. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna be playing with my second ever LDNAT5. Yeah, if you guys didn't see this video right here, Check it out, when we pulled the Dark Bison as my second LDNAT5. Now, a lot of you guys might know that I've had an LDNAT5 for quite a long time. Yeah, being this light vamp. And I've had it, and uh, a lot of people ask, oh, is there a video on it? You know, when did you summon it, and what's the story behind it? I basically rage summoned this unit a long time ago, and it was way before I even started streaming, so there's no videos or anything on it. And it was my only Nat5 from back in the day, up until recently. Back then, he wasn't good. Even now, he's kind of okay. I'm happy I had him. I never would have thought, I never would have expected to have ever obtained an LD Nat5, or a second LD Nat5 to be exact. And to have it be a Dark Bison, and to get it, after the Street Fighter event and just to have something that is so different than every other unit, right? Just because it's a special skin on it, I guess you can say, Street Fighter theme. I thought that was cool, right? It's not the, what is it, Slayer? Striker? It's not the Dark Slayer, but it's actually the Dark Bison. I thought that was insane. Hey everyone, before we get further into today's video, I'd like to thank Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. I'm sure you guys have all heard about Raid by now, but just in case, let me tell you a little bit about Raid Shadow Legends. Badass champions? Check. Tough bosses? Check. Millions of players? Check. Years of content and regular updates? Check and check. Raid Shadow Legends has it all. Caught in the middle of an epic struggle that raged for thousands of years. You'll fight noble kings and dark wizards. You'll uncover prophecies, curses, betrayal, and meet more than 12 warring factions. This game brings back everything I remember about my childhood, all with the gameplay I can take anywhere. One of the best things about Raid is it's free to play, and it's available on both mobile and PC. Let me show you guys a little bit more about Raid. So some of the cool things I enjoy about Raid is actually the animations and the art. So let me take you into the Champion Index. Take a look at these. Absolutely amazing. Look at this. This is what I mean when I say attention to detail. You can see the scales on his body. You can see his, his accessories holding. You can see the spikes on his arm. And the craziest part is that it's so smooth. Look at this. On top of that, you have the background, right? You have the water below him. It's just so much detail. I, I, I admire this the most about Raid Shadow Legends and I'll continue to always do so. Jerig as well. Basilisk. Right, you can see they all look different. They have like slightly different things about them, but they're all the same sort of theme. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stronger units here. The five-star characters. Look at this. Oh my god. This guy's huge. Draco Morph, my favorite character of all, just because I have him, and he's helped me through so many different areas of the game. So what's new in Raid? Raid just released their biggest update ever. The main event is here, the Doom Tower. It's a giant tower with 120 floors, a bunch of secret challenge rooms, and 12 seriously badass bosses to take on. I've been waiting for this for a long time, and I just can't wait to dive in. There's really never been a better time to start playing. And here's the best part. The raid team are giving away a bunch of new free goodies, plus a super special champion to help get everyone started in the tower. Bulwark. If you want to get a head start in raid, all you have to do is get into my special links down below. Download raid today, and you'll get a free void champion bulwark. 50 gems, an EXP booster, some energy refills, and even an ancient shard as soon as you get in the game. All these treasures and more will be waiting for you here. But keep in mind, this is only available for the next 30 days. So download Raid today, and I'll see you guys in the game. Now, let's get back to the video. You can see his stats. I just finished building him, just got him to level 40, and I put some runes on him. Currently right now, he's on a Violent Revenge set, and he's got a couple artifacts just for some extra health. These are his stats, but let's go ahead and take a look at the skills more in depth and talk about it here for a second. So skill number one, Psycho Inferno. Right, very similar to all of them. It raises the cycle power to attack the enemy and provoke the enemy for one turn. That goes up to 75%, which reminds me, I should Devilmon this. Now, this is going to be a very special skill, an important skill for what we're going to be doing here. Skill number two is Psycho Crusher. Wraps the cycle power around your body and dashes towards the enemy target to provoke and decrease attack power for one turn. This attack will deal more damage according to your max HP. So as you can see, it's a bruiser type. Awesome unit. All bruisers are really, really good, right? They're tanky. They do damage. They're a big threat. So that's really, really awesome. We're going to get that skill cooldown to be three turns, which is going to be great. And this is the part that's kind of crazy. Your attack bar will be filled up and HP will recover by 20% if you get attacked during the turn of the provoked enemy. So basically, you get a full turn and you get 20% heal when somebody attacks you when being provoked. This is insane. Just for the simple fact that you have two provoke skills and guess what, right? That 20% heal is actually kind of nuts. 
20% is a large shield, but it's also a large shield just for the fact that when your opponent hits you, right, it's going to be a skill one. Yeah, it's a provoke. It's, it's, it's only going to be able to use skill one. It's not going to do that much damage at all to you. So you basically heal it all up and you get another turn. And on top of that, you get that other turn and you get to attack again, whether it's a skill two or a skill one, you're going to be landing that provoke, meaning that you pretty much got this endless cycle of dealing out damage, provoking and constantly getting healed up to take no repercussions and constantly gain turns. Right, which I think can be a really, really good single target CC unit. I have him on his HP, crit damage, HP build. Just some stats to make it so he's not too slow. Uh, he's got some defense. He's got a lot of HP in there, like 45k before the towers and, and whatnot. And then, of course, good crit rate with good crit damage. I might actually consider raising his accuracy a little bit just for the simple fact that I think accuracy is very important for him. That's his main purpose, right? So I might even consider going like a full HP build in the future with just accuracy, but we'll see here. So let's go ahead and skill him up here real quick. All right, we're going to go ahead and test them out. Uh, I decided because there might not be a Guild Wars at this exact time for me here. We're going to go ahead and attack my defenses. And I had to put one of the old school comps, Molong Perda, Elad. And we'll also use them against the, uh, what is that, the Kamun Skogel Vigor, right? Some kind of standard bruisery comps that you probably might come up against. Who do we want to use them with, though? So we can use him. He has a crit rate leader skill in Arena, which is actually interesting. Maybe Anvil will be kind of nice, right? I really want something to defense break, something that can help sustain as well so that, you know, nothing dies on the team here and kind of make him the star, right? See how much damage he can dish out. You know what? Let's let's pick a random unit here, like... How about Fire Panda? Something kind of underrated. Hmm. You know what? Maybe Molong's better, right? And the reason why I'm, I'm gonna go Molong here... Is this the right one? Yeah. The reason I'm gonna go Molong is so I have more health. 33% more health, which is really nice. I'll just select anything for the bottom team. I'm in it to kind of see more of the mechanics on how this is gonna work, the interactions uh with the um what is it the um the dark buys in here more than anything let's go ahead and set up some strips got that rock up okay got pretty lucky there do we need to heal yet nah let's let's set some defense breaks up all right so oh or never mind we can just violent and heal okay cool or he can also violent that's fine uh let's see let's try cycle crush and see how much damage we do we're gonna go ahead and uh hit the uh let's go ahead and hit the uh the vigor here see how much damage we actually uh actually can do come on 18k not bad being a bruiser, not bad at all. 18,000 is actually okay damage, I guess. I would have expected a little bit more, but it is a skill too, and it does provoke him, right? Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and set up defense break. I don't wanna snipe anything. I don't wanna kill anything, right? We're just gonna tap something here. Ah. So I do get a full turn right away. Now, I do heal for 20%, but because I have HP Disturb, I wasn't able to heal. So that can be kind of a counter, I guess, to Dark Bison is having uh, HP Control, I mean, HP Disturb, right? Let's go ahead and hit this and see how much damage we do. I didn't even see how much. Okay, well, we get to go again. I love the animations there. 6K for a skill one. Now, of course, that's a different target than the Vigor, though, so we'll have to test it on the Vigor a little bit later. Set up a defense break. Okay. We need Oh, Violent. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do Cycle Crusher on uh, uh, Kamun here. Let's see if we can get a gauge on the, the variance of damage. We did 18k on the Vigor, 17k, so about the same. So I expect myself to do about 6 or 7k with the skill one uh, with uh, onto Vigor as well. Interesting. Okay, very, very interesting here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do this. I can see this being very, very toxic, right? Especially if you can get multiple, like, like I can Violent proc as well, right? I have them on Violent. I can provoke something, Violent proc, provoke something else. And now those two targets are going to hit me. I'm going to get healed for both. And then I'm going to also get my turns every single time they hit, right? One will hit, I'll gain a turn. I can hit somebody else. One will hit, I'll gain a turn. Somebody else. As well as have that chance to revenge proc, which we haven't seen yet. Uh, let's just go strip something or just stun them all. Okay, great. Uh, let's just hit this. That's going to not die. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hang on a second here. I But I get a turn instantly. The only problem is I got a turn and have HP disturb. So actually, fighting against Vigor and this Kamun is kind of bad. It, it kind of counters me, actually. Okay, now, I'm, I want to get hit here. And then, I'll see if we can kill this. Okay, we, we, we can't. Well, we did the test anyways, right? The test, the test was, you know what? <laughs> yeah, the test was more so to understand their interactions and, um, yeah. Let's go to try this up here and, uh, let, let, let's, let's bring him on the bottom and see if we can actually, uh, defeat him. Okay, let's see here. Uh, we'll go ahead and strip. Let's try to strategically attack this. They know I'm doing. They, they know I'm doing a test video. Okay, well it's not happening again. Okay, Molong's not going for Dark Bys again. See, there we go. And we got a stun, so we're okay. Uh, what we're gonna go to do here is, do we need a heal? Not really. Let's set up defense breaks. I want to kill some stuff. Okay, what we're gonna do is, so this is a hundred percent chance to provoke before accuracy resistance. If I hit the Molong, 
and I provoke it, right? He's gonna hit me, and then I'm gonna hit him who's gonna be able to hit me who hit him who hit her, which he shouldn't have because we don't hit girls. And after that, he hits me back. You know, so basically I hit him. He's gonna hit me before his Perna move, and it will make me get a turn, and then it'll allow me to hit the Perna, and then I can provoke the Perna to hit me, and then I can get my turn again. So basically going for the target, I feel, going for the target with the highest attack gauge, is actually pretty smart with him. See, I gained my turn. Now, if I want to stop the Perna there, I can go and hit the Perna, provoked it, right? Now, he's going to hit me. That's going to give me another turn. I'm going to heal that all back up, get another turn. I can provoke the Molong. Okay, we're just going to try to kill this one time. Oh my god, I love this Santa Slay um, animation. I have one HP. That's just really bad. He's going to hit me again. And then I, I, I get a turn. Then I can just kill him. Oh, I mean, I, I shouldn't have killed him, right? I could hit the Perna to, to prevent the Perna from killing my Molong potentially here. Holy, okay, hold on. Hang on a second here. Let me hit that. Provoke. Resisted. Violent. Provoke. Nice. Right there. Okay, now he did violent proc, right? So it does it doesn't give me an additional turn. It just increases my attack age so that I can take another turn. Let me go ahead and provoke the Elad. Nice. Right? And get the heals up. I I think my animal don't have doesn't have runes. I just realized I think my animal doesn't have runes because that, that didn't heal for crap. That healed for absolutely nothing. That gives me another turn. We kill this. Or we don't. <laughs> I don't think any of my units have roots. Yeah. Okay. Let's heal up. Yeah, this, I don't think I have a lot of attack on here. Can we get a defense break? Defense break and a despair stun. We're nuts. Wasting all my luck on my own defense. This is great. Yeah, there we go. Look at this damage. Wow. What a way to finish it off there. Nice. Okay, wow. So I think what we have learned here is that Dark Buys an OP. This unit is actually OP. For him to be able to be a single target CC control, be tanky and self-sustaining, I think is insane. On top of that, the skill too, which you get every three turns, right? Having that 100% chance to provoke and the attack down, that's big, right? Because now you can target units that do a lot of damage, put attack down and minimize that damage that you take from them, right? Even if let's say your defense broken, you know, just, you know, by chance and you can't shake up the defense break quickly, that attack down will definitely help the amount of damage that you're going to be taking as well. You're getting that 20% heal. So I think that's nice. I'm curious to see what other team comps I could come up with this, but uh, seems like Dark Bison's pretty strong. Another area of the game I think he's obviously going to be OP is, of course, RTA. I think he can be a very, very strong bruiser, single target CC unit in RTA. That'd be insane. If they gave him a strip, that'd be more insane, but... We don't need him to be that broken, right? Just, just a little bit broken. It'd be nice to have a super, you know, super broken LD Nat 5, though. He does have this arena crit rate lead, so that's why I was thinking RTA. So I think he would actually be a prime RTA unit. Now, of course, he might be good in Guild Wars and Guild Siege, but I think RTA might be his uh, his big jam. That's probably where we got to test him next. Like I said earlier, I'm thinking that, of course, Violent Will is obviously going to be great. Violent Revenge can be kind of fun. Obviously, I didn't really revenge, so it not really matter too much, but maybe Violet will be, will be the way to go, especially for RTA. Um, if you're going to root him up, I would say Bruiser type, right? High res if you can, just because of it. Yeah, just high res if you possibly can. But um, you don't have to, right? That's just premium to get high res. But I think I might consider going for a high crit rate build, no crit damage, and keeping him tanky while giving him good accuracy. If I can keep this build and get him to like 60% accuracy, that'd be dope. I don't know if that's the rune quality for it, right? Without dropping any of the stats. So I think Bruiser type build is good if you can have the runes for it, but... You can even consider going like a full tank build. Lots of health, a little bit of, of crit rate so you can do a little bit extra damage and then high accuracy would be really good because if you can make sure you land these skill ones and skill twos that provokes, I think you're going to be in good shape because that's his main power source, right? His main ability to control the map. So all in all, I'm actually very impressed by this test. Very, very impressed by this test. But all right, uh, leave me some comments down below on your thoughts about the Dark Bison. I would love to hear about it. Also, I'd like to kind of take this time to address a little bit uh, some, some things going on with the channel. As you guys have noticed, we have slowly, you know, changed from uploading every single day to uploading every other day. Yeah, or kind of like uh, sp sporadically every couple days. I plan to continue to do some of those content, but I've been more into like doing Pokemon lately. So if you guys are into Pokemon, uh, if you guys haven't seen, we've been doing a lot of Pokemon breaks, a lot of Pokemon unboxings, stop by the stream anytime, right? Still twitch.tv slash islandgrown. And also if you want to see some Pokemon videos that we've been making as well, get into the uh, description down below or actually get down to the, um, the homepage and you can see my new Pokemon YouTube channel. It's been great. It's been a fun time. If you enjoy the RNG of summons, you'll definitely enjoy the collecting and opening of Pokemon packs. That's for sure. So leave me some comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on Dark Bison. Maybe some things that you'd like to see me and where you'd like me to test them in. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I look forward to doing more of these crazy videos with you guys. We have a lot in store for this channel. But until the next time, I'll see you guys in the next live streamer video. Peace out, YouTube.